So massive plans for SmackDown plus so much more. Guys, we're going to talk about it right here. Don't forget, I'm giving away this championship belt at 100,000 subscribers. Welcome back to TAS. Of course, I'm Ango. We're going to kick things off with the CW Network. We know the CW Network is adding WWE NXT to its portfolio next year. There was rumors of NWA possibly getting a TV deal. Then there was rumors that suggested NWA potentially lost their TV deal. Well, now there might be something big happening and maybe potentially WWE starts working with some of these smaller companies. Dave Meltzer was talking about this in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. He basically, WWE might have a little bit of leniency in their contract with the CW in which this would allow the CW network to have more wrestling programs on their platform. Now, this is very interesting when you consider the NWA news, but Dave Meltzer did mention that Championship Wrestling from Hollywood was another company that potentially NWA, NWA, the CW network was uh, potentially open to having on their platform. Um, now, with that being said, the report also highlighted that WWE's current ownership by Endeavor might indicate a shift away from exclusivity as Endeavor is not known for imposing such restrictions when negotiating destinations for UFC programming. Furthermore, there have been indications that the CW is open to hosting multiple wrestling promotions on its platform, suggesting that it would be a more lenient approach to exclusivity in WWE's agreement. So you got to keep in mind, the CW probably not bringing in NWA. Maybe it happens, maybe it doesn't. But, you know, if Championship Wrestling from Hollywood is a promotion that could get a TV deal, let's say, you know, any of these smaller companies, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, TNA or NWA or something like that. If the CW were to bring in a smaller promotion and WWE is a little bit more lenient because of Endeavor and their overall approach, this is actually a really good thing for wrestling. But more importantly, I can see this actually becoming a thing where WWE, you know, they have level up, they have a whole bunch of people from the Performance Center. And at one point in time, WWE was doing stuff with Evolve and Progress and ICW. Maybe we get something like that but in 2024, maybe some of these up-and-comers in NXT can go to the CW. Well, not the CW, but whatever promotion the CW brings in, and then you could start having them utilized in these other promotions. This gives them the opportunity to, you know, get more development, working in front of a crowd, still working in front of TV. It would have some benefits for these newer upcoming talent. Perhaps talent that may be signed to WWE that have yet to debut in NXT can go work there. And honestly, if there was a company that I think it could actually potentially work with, and, and this is just me, you know, giving you theoretics, um, theoretical situations, but like, what if TNA were to leave Access TV, which by the way, Access TV is owned by Anthem, the parent company of Impact, but let's say they got a TV deal with the CW. Then you have some people at the Performance Center who have yet to come across on TV. They get to go work a couple matches in TNA on TV. Maybe they're used as enhancement talent or whatever the case may be. And by the time that they're ready to debut on NXT, WWE, because of the CW relationship, they can use footage from their TNA run. Like, I'm not saying that it's it's far-fetched, but I'm also going to say it's not as far-fetched as many people would believe. Now, I think it would only work if you're using you know, really young up and coming talent. I don't think it works when you use a big name. P potentially that's what it could lead to. But initially to start, it can make a lot of sense. And here's the thing. By WWE doing this, they're helping out the CW network. If they make the CW network happy, potentially more money for NXT. Because you got to remember WWE's influence across the other TV channels or TV shows on that channel could potentially be a big factor in the CW Network's growth. And if they're growing, obviously it makes a lot of sense for them to pay WWE more money. What about Sheamus? Where has Sheamus been? Uh, obviously, a lot of people have been talking about Sheamus because this guy who's been doing some great stuff on the main roster, then he got injured, and we haven't seen him since his loss uh, to Edge, right? Well, now WWE.com is actually advertising Sheamus for November 24th, December 8th, and December 15th episodes of WWE SmackDown. 
There hasn't been any indication that he's going to be part of Survivor Series. There hasn't been any indication that he'll be on TV prior. Um, but obviously being sidelined with a shoulder injury, it got a lot of people talking. It got a lot of people wondering what the hell is going on with this guy. Is he going to be coming back? Is he going to be sidelined much longer? And it doesn't actually appear to be the case. Now, Sheamus being cleared for return is good for multiple reasons. Right now, the Brawling Brutes are doing some excellent work in NXT, which is fantastic. But right now, SmackDown is absolutely kicking off with tons of stories, tons of things happening in the mid card. There's no shortage of good stories on SmackDown. And so when you bring Sheamus back, it's another legitimate player, which me personally, the way I'm kind of looking at it, we got to get a credible opponent for Roman Reigns before WrestleMania, before Cody Rhodes, before Cody finishes the story, Roman needs more stories. So potentially maybe for Royal Rumble, if WWE doesn't plant the seed for AJ Styles versus Roman Reigns, then you can always do something with the bloodline versus the brawling brutes going into the Royal Rumble, which obviously Sheamus versus Roman Reigns would be a very exciting matchup. Sheamus has become a very exciting babyface. Obviously, a lot of people have become a fan of him. This could work out a lot in WWE's favor, but also it could really position Sheamus a lot higher on the card than people might anticipate. So I like this idea uh, of using credible opponents, but you got to make sure the booking is reflecting of that. Sheamus has been booked pretty damn well in recent years, especially with the Brawling Brutes. That has become something that people have become very excited about. So I do think there is a lot of credibility in him fighting Roman Reigns. But only time will tell. We'll see how it all goes down. Hopefully, he comes back soon. Obviously, we would like to see that happen. But really, this is because SmackDown has some massive plans. And this is largely due to the fact that WWE is planting a lot more mid-card stories than normal. If you look at WWE SmackDown this past weekend, again, there's been an emphasis on the women's roster. Asuka joining Damage Control. What a great swerve to end the show, right? You have Asuka join Damage Control. Now these baby faces need partners. They are cooking up some very big storylines. And the cool thing about SmackDown right now, that's not the only thing that they're cooking up. They got stuff going on with the LWO, Santos, and Rey Mysterio. They got stuff going with LA Knight and Jimmy Uso. You got Grayson Waller and Kevin Owens. They are cooking up a lot of stories without the need of Roman Reigns. And clearly, WWE has some massive plans here because they are getting ready to go into that new TV deal with the USA Network. So you're going to see WWE continue to amplify SmackDown. It's a two-hour show. There's rumors it could become a three-hour show. In the event that it becomes a three-hour show, that is a very, very difficult thing to do. I think a lot of us collectively agree that SmackDown shouldn't be three hours. But ultimately, WWE is trying to make the the most amount of money possible. USA Network and NBC want to make the most amount of money possible, and you do that by loading up SmackDown. There is even rumors that Becky Lynch could find her way onto SmackDown to help the baby faces out, which I'm not even opposed to that. The only thing I would ask for WWE at that point in time is have Adam Pierce and Nick Aldis fight about it or do something storyline related as to why Becky Lynch would be added to that match because Becky is on Raw. But right now, as you can tell, WWE is not insulting people's viewers. For those who watch SmackDown every single week, you're starting to see a lot of long-term stuff Things that happened from years ago are getting positioned into today's television, and it's making it so much of a better product. Guys, I want to know what you think. Leave a comment down below, and don't forget, I'm giving away this championship belt at 100,000 subscribers.